thanks for joining me and my friend, Jim Beam. But not the cheap kind. Good old Kentucky bourbon. Europeans should try it. Might learn a thing or two. So, um, I wanted to talk about something while wow, it was fresh on my mind. Um, tonight, there were primary events in Kentucky and Oregon. Um, so I'll just talk about the Democrats since that's all that really applies here. Uh, Hillary Clinton won Kentucky by 1%, and Bernie Sanders won Oregon, uh, you know, somewhat handily. So the race will continue. Now, the main thing I wanted to talk about here was the people supporting Sanders that were visible at his speech, which was given tonight in, um, this is uh, the 17th. Um, he gave his speech in Carson, California. So you can imagine his support is strong. I mean, California, that's about as, uh, that's about as blue as you get. Oh, I'll mix that one just right. So I had to make notes because otherwise I would have forgotten all the little details. So first of all, introducing Bernie Sanders was actor Danny Glover. Now we know Danny Glover from uh, movies like The Color Purple in the 80s, which is a big um, white people were bad, black people were saints kind of movie. It probably was a good movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Oprah Winfrey's in it. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, I think, is in it. Uh, you know, you're the usual lot. Anyway, this and he's also in Predator too. So, any of you Predator, I know there's some of you in the hall, right? Um, any of you Predator fans, like, uh, yeah, Danny Glover, he was pretty good in that. But um, Sadly to say, Danny Glover really was revving up these Californians. Uh, they were at a fever pitch, I mean, rivaling the Trump ferocity, if not surpassing it. Um, so he really got them worked up. It just shows you how celebrities are, we're talking Hollywood here, you know, they're on uh, Sanders' side, Sander Cuck, as I like to call him. So, A few of the things Sanders was talking about in his speech, you know, he really wasn't saying much for like most of the speech. He was saying almost nothing. He, he really stayed away from issues in general. Uh, but he did some things I made note of. He said that he was going to stand up for uh, and um, advocate for social justice, end quote, and racial justice. Great, you know, that sounds great to me. I, I don't know, that's, that's just bad news to me, like, right? Racial justice, that means that, like, I must suffer or something, I don't know. Apparently that's what racial justice means. That's what it means to me, I don't know. <laughs> um, let me get into some more concrete stuff, though. Uh, so I wanted to talk about some of the people that were behind his podium. Now, uh, usually it's just, the people, it, it's, they try to choose, I assume they're choosing these people, but maybe this is just a random sample of people who have, who are supporting him, uh, who, who are actually placed behind the podium where the speech is, so you see these people on camera, and, you know, we've had shenanigans earlier, um, with these these supporters and stuff, but here, um, the first person that really caught my eye was this, they're mostly college-age students, and it was a girl with pink hair, like bright pink hair, like it couldn't get more fluorescent pink, right? And I'm just like, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> she's definitely representative of the direction of the country, and uh, that's a bit triggering for 
for someone like me. But it, there were, you know, a bunch of young people, very enthusiastic. But uh, the other people that really caught my eye were these three black girls. And at least from the moment I noticed them, they were on their cell phone the whole time. Or the one in the center was holding a cell phone, and the others, I don't know, I guess they think they had their own cell phones too, but they're all... Oh my god, they, they, they could care less about what Bernie Sanders was saying. All they were trying to decide, all they were trying to listen for was like whether they should applaud or boo. And uh, sometimes they had to see how the crowd was reacting to even know uh, how they should react. Especially when he was dropping names that, of people they have no idea who they are. So... And the, the girl in the center had a shirt that said, I wrote this down because I wanted to get this right, said, uh, let's see, where did I write that? Oh, here it is. Okay. Her shirt said, I love my blackness, and love was a heart, of course. Um, and at one point, the other the girls flanking her were holding her up to like elevate her or something. Um, <laughs> this is, I mean, these people were like once once again they were not paying attention to the speech at all. Like they were on the cell phones and then are waving to their friends. And at one point, the girl even did a little middle finger. And uh, <laughs> I mean, these people are just completely disconnected perfect example of why democracy might not be uh, the best system. <laughs> These people just should not be involved in decision making at all. Um, and they don't even care what their candidate was saying. Um, they weren't paying attention, little finger. Uh, and like I said, they're on their phones the entire time. And I just thought this was really representative of the kind of people that support Sanders. Um, Then I also wanted to say that, you know, it, not in this particular event, but in most of the events, um, you'll notice that they usually have, like, Muslims strategically placed behind the speakers, whether it's Clinton or Sanders, and you just have to ask yourself, I mean, do you, if you're a liberal, even if you're liberal, do you support that? Do you want women to have to cover your hair? Are you just so brainwashed that you think, oh... I like, I like them. I like the way they're living their life and they're trying to spread that in our society. You really like that? I mean, because that's what I see. I see 20 years ago, there wouldn't have been people like that behind people giving speeches. It would have been thought of, thought of as a negative. But now it's the liberals, uh, they want, they really want the headscarf women there so they can say, oh, look, we're being all multicultural and isn't as great now some women in, in the audience have to cover their hair you know it's just ridiculous you don't need me to say anything more about that but I notice that all the time with the liberals and you don't see that at Trump rallies but you see it all the time uh, Sanders and Clinton rallies let's see what else we got here oh yeah there's one more thing I wanted to say um, some of the few things that Sanders said that were actually somewhat concrete were, well, he was saying that he was against Trump, obviously, and he started to list the points, uh, uh, certain areas of disagreement he has with Trump. And one he said was the things that had been said about Latinos. And then the audience just erupted in booze, like, well, really loud boos. And then he said, things that have been said about Muslims, and the audience got even louder. I think that was the biggest boo, because these people are so cucked, they really want to defend the Muslim. And I just, you know, we just have to watch this. These are young, attractive, smart people, You often from well-off families. These, This is our future, all right? These people with their pink hair, their nerdy glasses just like I had in my previous video so sorry about that and you know 
these are the people that are receiving the world from us. I mean, how are, how are they going to take care of themselves? How are they going to defend themselves? The truth is they're not. They're going to disappear. They're going to be displaced. If you're one of these people, you need to wake up. You need to realize that uh, Islam is not for you and that not caring about anything and wanting to... I, I call it the feel the burn it down campaign because they just want to burn down society as we know it. I guess the only the only positive I can I can take out of it, if Sanders wins, if he wins the presidency, then maybe I can save some money on my student loans. Enough to save enough to get the hell out of this country. And I'm not I hate when people say like, oh get out of the country if someone else wins. Well you know, at this point, in all honesty, there might not be much of a country left if like Sanders or or Clinton has control for eight years. There you know, we're gonna see the Hispanic takeover, we're going to see uh, the black and Caribbean takeover, we're going to see more and more Islam, and uh, they're predicting economic collapse. Um, it's it's going to be pretty bad, so, uh, you know, I I don't always disagree, I, actually I usually agree with Alex Jones, I and mean, I, I think that, um, I think that uh, it will be time for people who can to head to the hills or greener pastures, aka out of the country. Sad to say, maybe that's just what losers say. Time to run. I'd like to fight, but it doesn't seem like fighting's an option these days. It's the war of minds. We have to convince these people to save themselves. You know, my life doesn't matter. Your guys' lives doesn't matter. don't matter. I mean, but our children, our children's lives matter. And I'm not gonna raise my children in a in a place of chaos, in a place that has been completely destroyed from the inside out. And I guess also from the outside in. So I really didn't have much more to say in this video. Um, thanks for listening. I'll catch you guys later.